Hello everyone and welcome. In this video we are checking out the 2016 Buick Regal GS all-wheel drive. And this vehicle actually comes with a surprising amount of performance features. There's a Haldex all-wheel drive system with an electronic limited slip rear differential, up front Brembo calipers, wide summer Pirelli P0 tires, electronically variable damping, and all of this is moved around with a 2-liter turbocharged engine producing 259 horsepower and 295 pound-feet of torque at just 2,500 RPM. The interior is also nice. Comfortable leather seats, decently bolstered, and plenty of room for my legs. There's plenty of adjustment in the steering wheel to pull it in or out, up or down. And you've got an electronic display up front with all kinds of different controls and features you can look through. And one of the best things about this vehicle, Apple CarPlay. So let's, in real time, just show how easy it is to hook up a phone and start using Apple CarPlay. So I've got my USB cord right here. I'll go ahead and plug that in. And then I plug that into my phone. And so once I've got my phone plugged in, on the screen here, we'll wait a second, Apple CarPlay pops up, and boom, I'm connected. My phone's connected. I can use my apps on my phone literally that quickly. It's insane. There's not other vehicles out there, uh, you know, without features like Apple CarPlay, where you can jump in that quickly, having never connected your phone before. It's insane how fast you can jump in, start using uh, your device, and that's how it should be. You shouldn't have to go through 100 menus to, you know, connect by Bluetooth, which you can also do with this if you want. You can connect uh, by Bluetooth and play on your phone that way, rather than using Apple CarPlay. Uh, but regardless, you know, it's nice to be able to just plug in and play. Um, so I really do like Apple CarPlay. Very user-friendly. The climate control setting I like the center here, but I'm not crazy about the adjustment in temperature. Uh, it's a little touch screen, and it's really not that responsive to use. Um, as you mess with it, it doesn't really always change the temperature. And same goes for the heated seat. It doesn't always pick up that you've touched it, so you can kind of sit there and mess with it or hold your finger over it, and eventually it may, you know, pick up the signal. As far as visibility looks good out the front to the sides, checking your blind spot, and out the back, all around the story's pretty good as far as visibility. I also do like the styling of the new Regal. I'm not a fan of the fake hood vents, but aside from that, you know, I do think it's a genuinely good looking car. Now, the vehicle has all these sporty features, uh, the electronic rear differential, the, you know, constantly variable damping system, uh, the Brembo front brakes. That is only in the front uh, for the calipers, not in the rear. Uh, but, you know, it's got all these performance features, the wide summer tires, the really torquey engine. Uh, you know, it even has a lap timer. And so, you know, when I was getting into this car, I thought, hey, this is going to be a pretty sporty vehicle. But the experience is actually quite the opposite. It's not that sporty of a vehicle. Now, yes, it's more fun to drive than a lot of the sedans out there, uh, but this vehicle weighs 4,000 pounds, which is quite a bit of heft to tow around, uh, even with that powerful engine. So if I drop it down into second gear and put my foot down, yeah, I mean, you feel some torque and it's actually pretty smooth power delivery, uh, but that said, there's not that much pull to it. Um, and so the shifting, I do like, it's actually fairly smooth. The manual mode, uh, it's a little slow, but the shifting is smooth. So the transmission overall, uh, smooth, just not that quick to shift. And you just don't get the feeling that this is you know, a sporty vehicle. And I don't think that's necessarily all that bad. I mean, it's a Buick sedan, it's all wheel drive, it's capable, uh, and it's a very comfortable experience in here. It's quiet, it's well damped, uh, so it's a comfortable ride, and you've got great visibility. So, you know, you can pretty much take this thing wherever you want to go with the all wheel drive system and have a comfortable experience while you're doing it. I just don't think it necessarily hit the mark that they were maybe looking for in the sportiness area. Uh, part of that also has to do with the steering. The steering is completely effortless. Um, and you do have different modes, so you can put it in this GS mode, and that firmens up the weight of the steering, but you really don't get any feedback from it, and it just doesn't feel that connected to the road as you're going through the corners. I do like the brake pedal. It has a nice progressive feel to it, um, and you know, there's not really any dead band in there. It's immediate as you get your foot onto it, so good actuation of the brakes. Same with the throttle. I mean, it really eases into the power. It doesn't slam you with that turbo, um, and you've got plenty of torque available early on. It's just not, uh, you know, a super quick, car because of its heft, 4,000 pounds. And that's actually, a lot of that is due to the all-wheel drive system. It adds 300 pounds versus the front-wheel drive system, which is about 3,700 pounds. Still heavy, but 
removes quite a bit of heft, and that actually does improve the zero to 60 time, uh, 6.5 seconds in the front wheel drive version, uh, so 0.3 seconds slower than the all wheel drive version. Which basically just lets you know, you know, traction really isn't the issue, it's the weight that's the issue as far as acceleration. As far as the fuel economy story, not too bad considering the car's heft and that it's all wheel drive. 19 in the city, 27 on the highway, and in my own testing I did a little bit over 29 miles per gallon. Uh, that was primarily highway driving. And so, you know, it is capable of decent gas mileage considering its weight and the fact that it's all wheel drive. So coming into some corners here, drop it down into second. A little bit of gravel on the road, so I'm not going to push it too hard. It does stay relatively flat though. It's in GS mode, so the damping, I guess, is making it a bit firmer in this stage. Yeah, not much body roll, decent control to it. When I floor it on corner exit, uh, it doesn't oversteer or kick out. I think that's mainly just because it doesn't have the power to do so. You know, but it's decently fun in these corners. There are certainly more boring sedans that you could be in uh, for that part of the road. There we go, a little bit of oversteer uh, forced by the rear tires there. Good strong brakes. Moving on to the 0 to 60 test, I will line it up straight. I've got the traction control off and I'm going to let the car do the shifting. So I'll build up the revs from a stop a little bit with my foot on the brake, let my foot off the brake and floor it, and then we'll be off. Seemed to be a decent launch actually. No tire spin. And there's 60. So it kind of tapers off in torque as you get down uh, into the higher speeds. Um, pulls hard initially, uh, but then it's just got so much heft once you get going, uh, you know, it's just not that fast to accelerate. Overall, I have enjoyed driving this. It's quiet, it's comfortable, Apple CarPlay is phenomenal. Um, it's just a bit heavy. I think its biggest drawback is just how much it weighs. So thank you guys for watching. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to leave those below.